Hello and welcome to the first of our Methoden module videos. That is the videos in which we try and help you with the writing of your term papers by explaining to you the necessary skills that you need to have. Today's topic is planning your paper, which is a very important topic indeed because you can't really start writing a paper if you don't know what you're writing about. And we're going to break that into three parts. First, we're going to talk about finding your idea or finding your niche that you're going to be using to actually write the paper. After that, we're going to talk about the basic structure of a paper. We're not going to get too in-depth, but we'll give you an idea of the overall idea of the term paper. Lastly, we're going to talk about planning. How are you actually going to write that paper once you know the structure, once you know the idea? How are you going to put that in your schedule? So without further ado, I think we should probably start by talking about finding your idea. Now, me and Tina basically had the same idea, I think, right? Yeah, I think I think you could say that. Um, partly, we went from how we would get our ideas for uh, essays and articles that we're writing. But for you, it's going to be a little bit different because you always have to look at your course content first. Your term paper is going to have to focus on what the main topics of the course were. You can't go too far away from it. So we would probably suggest that you look at the primary literature and the secondary literature that we've discussed during the term. Um, maybe have a look at the discussions that were being held in, uh, in class or in, for in the forums and try and see whether that will give you an idea for a term paper. For the most part, in any of your courses, any of the secondary material does relate to the course, by definition. So when you look at that secondary material, you can think about how it might apply to different texts. Maybe you read a secondary text that's for the interpreter, but the same theory or ideas could be applied or looked at with a different text. You could also take a key theoretical concept that has been talked about in the course and try and see how you can apply it to one or all of the primary literature texts that we're reading. A great example is in this course, we talk about the idea of hybridity. That's one of the big ideas that's going to be happening in this course. So if you want, you can kind of think about how does that apply to each of our texts? Maybe you can write a paper that compares two of the texts, or maybe you can just look at it in the context of one of them. But I would recommend doing that because sometimes the best idea will just strike your, your mind once you sit down and you think through how does each theory relate to the, the individual texts? One thing that's really common in these courses, right, is that a lot of the theoretical concepts could apply to all three texts, but we only have 13 weeks and we learn them at different times. So sometimes we teach something that's really valuable with the first text, but in the ninth week. How you actually come up with an idea ultimately does depend a lot on the process of the individual, right? We all have different ways in which ideas come into our heads. Uh, but the one thing I would recommend is simply read more. Uh, read more of the primary text, read it again, maybe, or read more research around those primary texts, and that will give you some ideas. Make notes, uh, write down quotes that you find interesting, because that will also help you with the writing of the paper. And if you're unsure whether your idea is, is doable, whether it's actually appropriate for term paper, just ask your lecturers. We're very happy to help you. We can't give you a topic or an idea. You have to come to us with an idea, but we can certainly help you identify how doable something is or maybe modify it so that it becomes uh, a good term paper idea. And usually uh, you probably will do that along with a kind of table of contents. But at this kind of stage, you probably are already coming up with an idea, right? Once you've you followed through and you've done the, the due diligence, you've done some research, you've looked at what we've done in the course, you probably have an idea of what you're talking about and you want to make a title, not only for the paper, uh, but also for those chapters and sub-chapters maybe. So that's kind of the neat tie-in to structure, right? Absolutely. The first thing that I would say with titles is a very common trend in cultural studies and in Anglophone literary studies is to use kind of a some kind of shocker or, or popular quote or, or some kind of line that calls attention to the paper and then put a colon after it, describing the analytical approach itself. You don't necessarily have to find a quote. You can just have a very matter-of-fact title that only gives 
the central concepts. But as Lucas said, it's it's quite uh, in fashion to do it with a quote. So if you want to have a catchy title, that would be one way to go. Right here on this PowerPoint slide, you can see a couple examples of how this is being used, one of which might maybe is actually from one of us. So what does the structure look like? Well, uh, you're probably all aware of, of the general structure of a paper. You've got the introduction, you've got the main part, and you've got the conclusion. And I think what Lucas and I would recommend is that you plan for a 10% introduction, maybe 10% or less conclusion, and then you can have 80% into your main part. And that can again be split up into a theoretical part and the analysis where the theoretical part would take up about 30% and 50% would go into your analysis of the primary literature. Of course, that can vary a little bit. Sometimes we're really writing maybe heavily on the cultural studies side of thing, or or maybe we're really, really conceptually theoretical. Then it's okay to do, you know, 40% theory or 50% theory as well. These are These are possibilities. But most commonly, we're going to see kind of that breakdown of 30 and 50. I think we, we would both agree that it's also a good idea to give yourself subsections that that those might be sub chapters where you discuss a specific aspect of your primary literature and then you will want to split up these sub chapters again into different paragraphs we don't want you to overdo it though we don't want you to have three or four sub chapters for each chapter because you're just going to have way too many sub chapters it's going to take up too much space and it's really not going to make a term paper the right size. So we would recommend that you make sure that there are kind of like three main points in the main body, um, perhaps three main points about the theory, three main points about the analysis. And if you need to break those into three subchapters, that's actually quite a lot when we've got a 10 to 15 page paper. So maybe scale it down. See if you can be a little bit more broad when you write the subchapters. But at the same time, it's a very useful way to break down and move between these different concepts. Sometimes it's very unnatural to just shift to a different idea without a subchapter. Those subchapters can also help you when it comes to your time planning. Because you could, for example, uh, set yourself a specific time period for subchapter 2.1. Then you, you finish that and you move on to 2.2. And many of us do work like that. We are able to, you know, methodologically break it up into different parts and work on individual parts at our leisure. That's not for everybody, though, and we're aware of that as well. So we would definitely recommend that you know yourself and, and know whether or not you can keep a schedule or not. If you can, definitely do it. And if you can't, it's time to learn a little bit about how you can do that, perhaps, uh, because there are certain parts of the paper that we do need to budget time for that people don't usually think about. Usually we just think about writing the paper, uh, but there's more to it than that. For example, we need time for the research. That's going to take up quite a lot, actually. Sometimes it takes up more than the writing because your ideas will develop while you do research, you'll make notes, and then once it comes to the writing down of everything, it might go quite quickly. That, again, depends on your personal way of writing. I, myself prefer to to do a lot of research at first then go into writing other scholars that i know prefer to start with the writing right away and do research on the side so that is something that you again will have to decide for yourself of course there's also after writing the rough draft of the paper you're probably going to want to put away some time to edit sometimes that means just yourself right looking over the paper and getting a fresh perspective sometimes you need to distance yourself and get a few days before you look at a paper again but oftentimes we also want someone else to edit our, our stuff as well. Perhaps a colleague in this course or another one of your courses or just a good friend. And when you do that, you need to be respectful of the fact that they also have term papers and they also have a time schedule. So you need to make sure you budget enough time for them to read it. And I think that's about all we have to say when it comes to planning, structuring and starting your term paper. But do have a look at our other videos where we explain the academic skills that you need to write a term paper. Our next video is going to be about researching because that's really an important part that kind of begins before and during the planning of the paper. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.